I've been thinking a lot about the technologies that I wanted to learn this year, and I ended up creating a personal mind map of the things that I wanted to learn so that I could become a better full stack developer by the end of 2021. Now, if you're like me and you're a junior software engineer that you've been in the industry for one or two years, or if you're someone that's looking to get into software engineering, I think this video is going to be really helpful, or at least it'll inspire you to set your own goals on your own learning roadmap so that you can achieve what you want to achieve this year. Now, don't get me wrong, I set goals every year and I forget about them in the second week of January, but I feel like if I make a video about it, maybe I'll hold myself a bit more accountable. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys to go ahead and learn HTML and CSS. I'm just going to assume that you already have that knowledge and this video is going to be more actionable and based on what cutting edge businesses are really using in the industry. Not only that, this advice is going to be based on hundreds of job listings that I found and sifted through on LinkedIn and Stack Overflow jobs in the full stack developer role. This is a top level overview of what the mind map looks like. As you can see, we've got four sections. We've got front end, back end, cloud, and big data. And I'm gonna go into why we're gonna explore those four sections in a second. I think the most important section of this mind map for most people is gonna be this front end section. The reason I say that is because React is an insanely popular library. And this is my opinion, the best tools that you can use to help your React development in the full stack space. The first thing I want to run you guys through on the front end section is a framework called Next.js. The reason I love Next.js so much is because of the positive developer experience. Vercel, the company behind Next.js, really gets it when it comes to what people want to do as a developer. What I mean by that is Next.js does so much configuration behind the scenes that you can really just jump in and start developing the things that you actually want to work on. Next.js has a lot of complex features that they make super simple, like static site generation and server side rendering, and doing those things on a page by page basis decide which one you want to use in which page. Not only that, you can have serverless functions run on their system using built-in API routes, having your API routes in the same project as your front end and communicating those things with live updates using their client side fetching library called SWR. The next thing that I'm really excited to learn this year is TypeScript. TypeScript was probably the most common language that popped up throughout the job listings that I browsed. The reason I think that is because JavaScript alone has no compile time or build time safety and you don't want to release it without thorough testing implemented when you're releasing it to the public. TypeScript is going to give you a lot of confidence that your application is built correctly and it tells you when things have the potential to break as you're coding them. Speaking of testing, Jest was the React framework that I found was used in most job listings by far. Now, I personally have never written a React test in my life, but within the industry, you want to ensure that your previous versions and your previous features of your application or your full stack website are still working as you're continuously deploying new features to the public. The second most popular testing library that I saw within the job listings that I found was React Testing Library. Now, like I said, testing is a huge gap within my skill set right now, and I still have no idea how to apply tests like Jest and React Testing Library to my applications. So, this is a huge thing that I want to fill the gap in my skill set in 2021. The main UI library that I want to learn this year is called Chakra UI. The reason I really want to learn Chakra is because of this tool right here called Open Chakra. Open Chakra is a visual editor for Chakra components where you can drag and drop React components into this visual editor and actually convert them straight to React code in Chakra components. And you can just copy and paste this into your application and have this exact design created for you. The next technology that I noticed was really, really popular within the job listings that I found was GraphQL. Now, I don't fully understand what GraphQL really does. All I know is that it allows you to specify what you want to return from your backend through your client side. So if you wanted to return a specific field from a specific database that you have, you could just ask one API for all of that information and you could dynamically change and mutate that or subscribe to live updates from this GraphQL endpoint. And it combines multiple resources into one endpoint and you can simply just ask for what you want from the client side. That leads nicely into what I wanted to learn in this backend section this year. Now you'll notice the only thing that I have listed is AWS Amplify. AWS Amplify is a serverless framework that provides a ton of features based on what AWS provides and it allows you to build these full stack applications insanely fast with the best technology out there. Now, as a junior, it feels like AWS has this insane learning curve at the beginning, but I noticed a ton of jobs were asking for either general AWS experience or experience in specific AWS services. AWS Amplify is probably the thing that I'm most excited to learn this year, and that's just because of the sheer amount of resources and functionality that it actually has. And the reason that I connected this with GraphQL is because it deploys a backend GraphQL API using AWS AppSync. 
AWS AppSync essentially converts your backend databases into a GraphQL API and hosts that GraphQL API for you. What AWS Amplify and AppSync allow you to do is create these automatically generated files which contain every possible GraphQL operation that you could possibly want to do on your backend. Let's say you're using Next.js for the front end and you want to perform this server-side operation before the page loads. So you want to fetch data from your GraphQL server served up by AWS AppSync. You could just say await api.graphql.graphql operation and list the operation that you want to perform. It's going to go ahead and perform that operation onto your AWS AppSync instance, hit the GraphQL API endpoint and come back with either data or errors. Now over here in the cloud section, I've listed two AWS things that I wanted to achieve. One's just a generic AWS statement that I wanna get more knowledge in the AWS space and become an AWS certified developer associate. Now, if you don't already know what an AWS certified developer is, it essentially means that you can pay to sit an AWS exam where you're gonna be tested on a variety of AWS services in a randomly generated quiz. And if you pass a certain percentage of those questions, then you'll be given a certification that you are an AWS certified developer associate. The reason that I would want this is because as a junior, I feel like I should be able to prove myself and show that if I was applying for a role that required AWS skills, that I have the skills available, that I have proof that I've shown those skills and demonstrated a core understanding of the AWS products that are available. Now moving on to the last section, big data. And you might be wondering, this feels a bit out of place. Why did you put that in? And that's actually because I'm going to be working as a big data engineer over the next nine months at my current workplace. I'm not gonna dive into each one of these individually because I don't feel like it fits in with the full stack developer theme of this video. If you guys are interested in seeing how I learn and progress these skills throughout the year and the little projects that I make along the way, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button if you enjoyed this video. Other than that guys, that wraps up my little roadmap for 2021. Hopefully this inspired you guys to create a roadmap of the technologies that you want to learn and hopefully this year is a little better than it was last year so that we can progress on our goals a little bit more. Thanks for watching guys. See you later.